everybody here's a video about a double overhand knot soft shackle this is a companion video to another one i made called easy soft shackle in my other video i made a soft shackle with a double overhand knot on a bite of am steel so some of the things that people are saying is that well this double overhand knot it's not going to work because it's not getting set properly or it's going to invert on itself well, something about the double overhand knot is it's not going to invert on itself. The reason is the coils of the double overhand knot. Here's a double overhand knot. The coils are right on the main line. So compare that to the type of knot that will invert. A large button knot or a diamond knot. This is the type of knot that can invert on itself. The reason is the coils ride on themselves. Some of them ride on the main line right here, but then they also ride on themselves. So the reason a knot like this can invert in a double overhand probably won't. When this is connected up as a soft shackle, we'll say this part is the noose, and this thing is heavily loaded, like close to its max or beyond, the size of this knot can actually guide the noose, even if it's spliced close like this it can actually guide the noose out and away. So as this thing pulls stress, 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 this noose right here is pushing harder against the large knot and it can guide it to open. So as it guides it to open up a little bit, even if there is a splice right here and it's tight, as it guides it to open a little bit, what happens, the distance between the main line and where the noose is contacting this knot increases. So there's a leverage. If this knot is riding on the base, the leverage, there is no leverage because the noose is pulling right at the base of the knot. But as this noose gets farther away from the main line, it has leverage against these coils. So right here, the knot will never invert. But as the noose is forced to open a little bit, it's pushing on these coils that are away from the main line, and this knot can invert. Now compare that to the double overhand knot, since it's slightly smaller and the coils, there's only one coil up against the main line, one coil in a series. As this thing loads up harder and harder and harder and harder, this line is never forced up and around a larger knot. So yes, this knot is smaller and you do have to pay more attention to making sure your initial coil when you do the soft shackle is around the knot this isn't a knot that's going to invert the reason is these this noose part never has enough leverage to invert this knot and the knot won't invert the coils are just up against the main line there's no extra wrap of coils out here making this knot larger so the knot might tighten up really hard and the knot might get smaller from the force but it's not going to invert in the way a knot like this will. A knot like this has to be set perfectly because there's multiple coils in there. A knot like this just has to be tied uniformly the first time. And then after that, you just have to pay attention to getting your noose set right. So the types of knots that can invert are diamond knots like this and button knots like this. And the reason is because where the noose rides on the main line with this big knot, as the noose is forced to open, the noose moves out away from the main line and has leverage against these coils. The leverage against coils of the double overhand knot are minimal. So these coils just have a direct pull. The shackle is either locked up and working or it's not working. So to show you how good the double overhand knot works, let's go outside and do a demonstration. All right, here we are out at the hammock stand. I'm gonna tie up a double overhand knot with this slippery throw line. It's only 450 tensile, right off the spool, fresh and new and slick. I'm gonna cut a piece off and make an easy shackle out of this slippery, lower than 1600 tensile line. So I'm gonna tie the double overhand knot. 
I'm just going to tie it up. Just do a quick tie on it. I'm not going to do any special setting or anything. I'm just going to snug the knot up. There it is, double overhand knot. And I'm going to use it to suspend this hammock here. And I'm going to get in the hammock here and show you guys. And I'm going to use this shackle to suspend myself. Okay, here's the shackle on my main line for my hammock chair. And as you can see, I've just looped the shackle bite right here over the double overhand knot. So right here, I'm gonna hang my carabiner right here. I'm not gonna do a soft link on the end of this. I'm not going to flip a noose into this. I'm just gonna let it ride up against this overhand knot. And here it is. So this is the carabiner down to my hammock chair. It's just my double overhand knot and just the bite around the double overhand knot. And then I'll get into this hammock chair and show you guys how good it holds. All right, so here I am in the hammock chair. I'll show you that I got my feet off the ground. I'm off the ground. Up there is my 450 pound double overhand knot saw shackle. I'm off the ground, the amateur. And uh, no problems. That's about 240 pounds direct pull. Soft shackle holding up just fine.